Grosso friends, welcome back to Opus LNI, where it is fixing to be very cold this weekend. For those of you who don't know, I live in Central Texas, and we are expecting a heck of a winter storm this weekend. If you were here last year, you'll remember that the last winter storm we had knocked out power and water for about 11 and a half million people. And if you weren't, I made a video about the experience and how my medieval reenactment background helped to mitigate some of the worst things. So I'm kind of racing the clock here, trying to get everything finished and edited and uploaded in case there is a power outage this weekend. This is the second part of my Viking Lyriel series. Last video, I showed the making of the unbleached linen tunic I made. This time I'm making her librarian's waistcoat. In the book, it's described as being made of silk over canvas, both to serve as identification, um, different ranks of librarians wear different colors of waistcoat, and as rudimentary armor. I was a bit stumped as to how to work a waistcoat into a Viking wardrobe until I came across the Hedeby vest. This find comes from the city of Hedeby and dates back to the 10th century. Like many garments of the age, the remains are fragmentary, so there's a lot of speculative construction. Oddly, this piece doesn't have a ton of representation in the reenactment community, but Caleb Birch, who runs the fantastic blog Project Broadax, made a recreation of the Hedeby vest that was integral to my understanding of how the construction worked. I'll make sure to link to his site in the description. Make sure to check it out. His work is thoroughly delightful. Basically, much like everything else in this period, we start off with some rectangles, shape them slightly as necessary to fit around curvy bodies, and then sew them together. So come along with me as we figure out kind of, sort of, how this vest is constructed, or at least how to construct it to fit on my body, and to fit another piece of the Lyriel puzzle. Go grab your cuppa. Today I am drinking a new tea from Tabletop Teas. This one is level up and it tastes like vanilla cake with raspberry filling. And I'm drinking it in my Feed the Ravens Viking reproduction cup because I love a theme. Let's get into it. I'm starting off with a wool I've lightly fulled or felted by running through the washing machine a time or two. This helps stabilize the fabric a bit by locking the fibers together and fuzzes everything up just a little. Many historical finds are made from fulled fabric. I'm not entirely sure exactly how this garment is going to work on my body, so there's going to have to be some experimentation. Like just about every other piece of European clothing from this time period, though, I'll be starting with rectangles. I can adjust those to fit as I go. After I have all of my pieces, back, front shoulder pieces, and front lower pieces cut out, I can start fitting things. I'll start by loosely pinning the shoulders together and then holding up the lower front pieces to mark how it lays on me. I 
I know that the top front edge has a little bit of a slant to it based on Caleb's recreation, so I will mark that line. Then I'll mark the shoulder seams and neckline across the top edge of the back. Once the front shoulder pieces are pinned into place, I can mark where the lower front and back pieces should meet. Once that's all finished and I'm satisfied with a quick pinned mock-up, I can mark the new edges and cut off the excess and start hemming all of the pieces. As I did when I made my market wallet, I'll be hemming each piece individually and then sewing them all together at the end, rather than seaming the pieces and then felling the allowances. Thank you to my newest Kofi member, Meryl B. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants make it easier to do what I do and provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see how I put the waistcoat together.
Once all of the pieces have been hemmed, I'm going to sew them together with a simple whip stitch, just like I did for the market wallet bag. This wool has some bounce and squish to it because of the fulling, and that means I need to be careful with the tension of my stitches. If I pull too tight, the seam gathers slightly instead of laying flat and even. New day, new sewing. The waistcoat came together more quickly than I thought it would. The hemming was the longest part, and from start to finish, the project only took about three days.
that is all for now, croissants. Thank you for joining me for today's project. I can't wait to finish up Lirial's outfit. I have something a bit special planned for the final reveal. For now though, everyone keep safe and warm, unless you're in the Antipodes, in which case stay safe and cool. And I'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with others. If you're a fan of notifications, click the bell if you haven't already. And if you would like to find me on other social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere. All of those links will be down in the description below, along with a link to my Ko-fi where you can check out my shop, become a member, or make a one-time donation to help support Production Assistant brand directly. As always, friends, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Quill.